Welcome to our lecture online and now we're going to talk about Kepler. Kepler and his three laws. Now Kepler was a... Ah, let me start over again. Okay. Welcome to our lecture online and now we're going to talk about Kepler and his three laws. Now Kepler started working for Tycho Brahe when he was about 29 years old. Kepler was born in 1571 and towards the end of the life of Tycho Brahe, he ended up meeting him in Austria and he was very interesting in the work that Tycho Brahe was doing and he wanted to get some employment working for Tycho Brahe, helping him out with his studies and his, his research. And at first he began to work with Tycho Brahe and, in, and Tycho could see that Kepler was a very smart individual and he dug into the information that he got and then all that, a lot of the data that uh, he received from Tycho to start working on it and you could see that he was really getting the understanding of what that data might mean, the data that Tycho had collected over his life of observations. But, of course, he was kind of afraid to just divulge all the information all at once, so he just gave him little bits and pieces at a time. And then also, he wasn't paying Kepler very much, and Kepler wanted to be able to support his family. So there was some disagreement, and Kepler left and said, you know, you don't pay me enough. And, but he ended up coming back, and they passed up their differences. Uh, Tycho paid him a little bit more money, and so Kepler continued to do research on the data that, that Tycho had uh, collected. Unfortunately, not long after they had met and, and Kepler began to work for Tycho, uh, Tycho died from, from uh, having so many health problems. And then at that point, Kepler continued to do his studies and continued to work with all that observation material, and finally the light went on and began to realize what it all meant he realized that the idea that everything moved in circular motion around the sun was wrong and actually the motion of the planets around the sun were elliptical orbits and once he started realize, realizing that the data, the information that was in the data that, that, that Tycho had collected for all those years began to make sense. So here were the three laws that Kepler came up with. The first law was realizing that if the sun was over here that the orbits of the planets were elliptical rather than circular, so that sometimes the, the planet would be much farther away from the sun and sometimes the planet would be much closer than the sun. It turned out that the ellipse was in such a way that the sun was at one of the two foci of the ellipse. Here would be the other foci, there would be the sun. And what a focus means of an ellipse, really, if you were to take a long string and connect it to the two foci, like this, and then you stretch it out, like this, let's say you have a string like this and you have a pencil and you keep the string taut and you try to go all the way around like this, you will make an elliptical shape and so that the sum of these two distances of course always have to be the same. And so that's what we meant by the sun being at one of the foci, such a way that the planet sometimes is close and sometimes is far away. So that was the first law of Kepler, is that he realized that the motion of planets were elliptical rather than circular. The second law of Kepler was that he realized that when the planet was far away from the sun, the planet slowed down. And when the planet was close to the sun, the planet sped up. He couldn't explain yet why that happened. And of course, now we realize it is, the, it is the combined information of the kinetic and potential energy that the planet has as it goes around the sun. When the kinetic energy increases, the potential energy decreases. And when the kinetic energy decreases, the potential energy increases. So that the total energy is always the same. Of course, he didn't realize that, but he was able to detect that they moved faster when they're close and slower when they're far away. Not only that, when he did careful measurements, he realized that if he took an imaginary rope force, for example, let's say here's the planet, and let's say you have the, an imaginary rope connecting the sun to the planet, and as the planet revolved around the sun, you could tell that over a certain, a certain time elapsed, the planet would move a smaller distance when it's far away, and so let's connect those two lines like this. And then when the planet was close, in the same amount of time, the planet moved a much greater distance in such a way that the area swept up by this invisible line, or that imaginary line, the area swept up for unit time would always be the same. So again, not only did he realize the change in speed in the orbit, he also realized that this area here swept out by a particular amount of time, per unit time, so to speak, is always equal no matter where in the orbit the planet was. Another tremendous discovery, so that the area swept up will always be equal. And thirdly, he began to realize that the time that planets spent orbiting the sun depended upon the distance, and he found that relationship between the 
So the third law said that the period of the orbit squared was equal to the average distance, and we use A to say the average distance between the planet and the sun, cubed. And so this relationship was Kepler's third law, so we have the first law, second law, and third law. He said the relationship between the time that it took for a planet to orbit the sun and the distance to that sun, if you thought of it in terms of, in this case, the distance in terms of the distance between the Earth and the sun, and the period in years that relationship existed. For example, if you think of the, the period of the Earth is one year, and the distance between the Earth and the Sun is one astronomical unit, you can see that one squared equals one, one cube. If you then imagine for a moment that the period, let's say the orbital period of Jupiter is about 11.3 years or something like that, if you take that and you square that, that is equal to the average distance between Jupiter and the Sun, which is around I would say about 5.2 astronomical units or something like that cubed. So we found that there was always that relationship between the period and the orbital distance to, from the sun to the planet. And that is then Kepler's third law. This revolutionized their understanding of the solar system. Finally, we no, no longer needed the deferent and epicycles. We no longer needed the thing that planets moved in circles. We knew they moved in ellipses. And that everything we observer, observed and everything that Taco had observed, observed over those 20 years now made sense. There was a complete understanding now of how the planets moved. We just didn't know why. There was this strange force, something that caused things to move in the universe the way they did. But until Newton came, we couldn't prove it. We couldn't mathematically show why this was happening the way it did. But at least we understood what was happening. We just didn't know yet why. And those were the contributions of Kepler, and of course, because of Tycho Brahe's observations. Because Kepler may have never discovered this if it wasn't for all the work that Tycho Brahe had spent observing the planet for 20 years. And that's how it went. Welcome to Electron Lan.